Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will work through an old exercise that I usually use for my in-classroom students. I allow them to do this themselves in the UI. Now I'm going to do the same thing in PowerShell because I think this illustrates a lot of common scenarios. So we're going to start with a blank site collection. I already have that. And then we're going to start by creating three department sites. And those are going to be sub-sites, of course. And we'll go through them step by step. This is going to be a rather long demonstration or series of demonstrations rather. So bear with me and you might want to skip ahead, of course, if you think it's going too slow or skip backwards. If you haven't done this exercise or seen that video before, go back and see that. Also, I'm going to be reusing some of the code that I've done before. So if you haven't or you don't understand already how this code works, then go back to my previous videos and I'll explain all that in detail. All right. So this is code to connect to SharePoint and create a list or library. That's what the, that code does. It's a function to do that. So we're going to be using that stuff now. And let's just run the whole thing here so that we're properly connected to my SharePoint site. And that is a rather blank communication site. It does not currently have any subsites and it only has the document library and the events list. That's the default. So let's go into PowerShell and start building this. First of all, of course, we need an array with departments. So I'm just going to declare a variable for that, departments. And I'm going to type in just the ones here, sales, production, and support. And then we're going to loop through those for each department, dep, I'll call it dep, in departments, and then I will do something inside there. And now, of course, we're going to create subsites. And to create subsites, let's go through the add ons here and show that. View the show commands add on. We'll see what is needed to do that. First of all, we're going to filter down to the SharePoint commands here PowerShell PMP Online, that's the one. And now we're going to work with subsites. So if I search for site here, you get PMP site and so on. But it's important to know that sites in the UI and sites in the API are called different things. Subsites and the root site in a site collection are all called webs. So that's what we're working with. When we're working with a site object, it only contains subsites. It does not contain any apps. What the object, the API object that contains lists and libraries, that is an SP web object. So when we're creating new site collections, then we get one site collection SP site object with one or more SP web objects. That's how it is. So what we need to be looking at are web. So that's the concept. We have the get PMP web. We have the new PMP web there. That's the one we want, of course, new PMP web. That's there we have. So there we see it takes three mandatory parameters, template, title, and URL. As you see, the template here is just a string value. So I won't get any IntelliSense on which template ID to put in. So I found a website that lists all of those here. I'll put that in the comments also or in the description of this video. And the one we want to be using here is the communication site. So that's the one we'll be using. So I'm just going to copy that one now so that we have that in detail. And then we're going to do the coding here. And we're just going to do new PMP web. And the title is going to be the name of the department. Like that. The URL can be the dep also, the department, the current department that we're working on. We also want to have the same navigation in all of them. So let's do inherit navigation there. And um, then the template, of course, is going to be the one we just copied. This one, the site publishing. So that's the string we're going to be using there. So let's try this now and run it. Now it's um, doing something, obviously, so this is taking some time. So it seems to be working just fine. So let's go back here and look at the subsites and refresh the page. And there we go. We have production, sales, and support. So that's perfect. So let's look at that and we'll see that, yes, it is as it should be. Great. So the next thing we need to work on now is, of course, the navigation. As, as you saw, we did the shared navigation on all of those. 
but if I see the production site, it's not easy to see the other ones. So they actually do not have any shared navigation so far. So that is the next step we want to do. But before we do that, we are going to just do some code to remove all the sites again, because we want to try these over and over and see everything is working. So let's do that. Let's do another for each loop down here so that we can remove stuff. And that's very, very easy. Just going to remove uh, PMP web and the title. Let's see what remove PMP web requires. Just an identity. All right. So we can just send in the depth there and that will remove it. So let's uh, clear this out again. Interesting. It should pick up the identity, of course, there. Ah, there we have it. It has two variants with it, with the URL. There we go. So let's put that in there. So let's do the URL. All right. Great. Let's try it again. Clear out the error that I got first. And run. And um, we can suspend that and just do a force there so we don't have to get the question all the time. And then we just do this and run the selection again. And now it should be removing all of those subsites without asking the question. So there we're back to zero again. So that, that's the first step. Now we know how to create the subsites and also to remove them so that we can start over from scratch. That's good. That's progress made for the first demonstration. In the next demonstration, I will show you how to fix the navigation. Thank you for watching this demonstration.